Welcome to Falmouth. If you're a visitor, this is where surf and sun meet for fun. If you're a resident, this is where you'll find the businesses and the resources necessary to fill all of your needs. If you're a business person, this can be your home. Join with other men and women who work together to make this a sustainable economy year-round. Welcome to Falmouth, Cape Cod. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the June 10, 2013 meeting of the Falmouth Board of Selectmen. I invite you to join the board as we start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Some procedural announcements before we begin our meeting. Um, if you have a cell phone on your person, we ask that you silence it or turn it off for the duration of your time here with us. Please refrain from any conversations in the audience or immediately outside the room so that we can conduct the business uninterrupted. Uh, there is a speaker's policy. If you're not familiar with it, it is at the lectern and it is available online, I believe. If you do leave the uh, meeting before we adjourn, please note that we still have business to do, so please try to leave quietly. Um, also noted, uh, I will be leaving the meeting a little bit early. I have some personal matters to attend to, and Mr. Jones will be chairing the, the second half of the meeting. And with that, um, we have a proclamation tonight, the Day of Portugal. Whereas the town of Falmouth is home to a large number of Portuguese American people, and whereas the Portuguese culture is praiseworthy and world famous, and whereas Louis Vaz de Camoes, the famous 16th century epic poet, is a symbol of Portuguese cultural achievements and is honored by Portuguese people the world over on this day, and whereas members and friends of the Portuguese have formed an association to foster Portuguese culture and instill a pride of heritage, and whereas a committee was organized to plan a celebration of these events, the Day of Portugal, the remembrance of the dearly departed, and whereas Falmouth joins with other Portuguese communities 
in recognition of Luis Vaz de Camo's great accomplishment of recording Portugal's notable and remarkable history to be promoted on this day. Now, therefore, we, Brent Putnam, Doug Jones, Mary Pat Flynn, Kevin Murphy, and Rebecca Moffat, as selectmen of the town of Falmouth, by the authority vested in us, do hereby proclaim June 15th, 2013, as Day of Portugal. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Unanimous. Do we have any other announcements from the board or the town manager's office? All right. The next item on our agenda, oh, and just as an FYI, folks, you may have noticed uh, for the public's edification and the boards that there's no times on this evening's agenda. Um, a little bit of research, I discovered that, uh, in fact, we're the only board in town that uses times or puts times on our agenda. And after some discussion with uh, staff in the town manager's office, um, found that it was very difficult for them because whenever something was rearranged on the agenda, they would have to juggle the times. And uh, obviously, we don't always stick to the times very well, so it seemed easier to simply remove them. Thank you. Um, and proceed as the other boards in town have done. So we'll see how this works out and, uh, and sort of revisit the issue if, if necessary. I would just say that I, I like the times on there, mm -hmm. and we did follow that always as when I was chairman previously. And it's a uh, it's like a rudder; it just keeps you online. And okay. uh, and I really like the times being on there. Okay, so noted. Okay. Um, the next item on our agenda is to discuss and or vote hearing procedures. Um, we have a few different drafts here that are available for discussion this evening. Um, one of the things that came out of some prior hearings earlier this year, especially there was some uh, liquor license that was remanded back to the board, was the fact that um, there may have been some process that the board needs to tighten up. And so we have, there's a draft here that I had presented to the board, a draft here that uh, Ms. Flynn had presented. And also, uh, you should have a copy of the, uh, the process used by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, we could, I guess, jump into a discussion here, or uh, considering we have a hearing immediately after this, uh, a wetland hearing, uh, a suggestion that I would make is that we uh, proceed with the draft that I presented to the board and see how it fits. And then um, as we, we can put this on the agenda for discussion at a later date and uh, sort of refine it, uh, add, subtract as the board sees fit. I'd just like to make a comment. The one that I proposed really relates to most of the hearings we have, which are either liquor license hearings or hearings regarding docks, uh, wetland hearings, as we refer to them. Uh, usually, if we have hearings that are of another nature, such as related to personnel, whether it be an employee or a special municipal employee who would be either a member of a board or a committee or a town manager or someone by contract, we usually have to create the, um, the procedures for those hearings. But this one is very simple, and it really gets us through the hearings that we have on a normal basis. And th this process is actually uh, comes from the, from the general laws, which really um, say that um, um, the board, like our board, you, and you have an applicant make a presentation, you hear after you open the hearing, and, uh, and then you have public testimony. And then following the public testimony, then the board closes the hearing, and then the board discusses and the board votes. So it's really very simple. It doesn't really amount to anything more than that. And when the board discusses it, they vote. They either vote to approve it, to approve it with conditions, uh, to table it, or to deny it. And then just some general guidelines, which I know you have in yours, which relates to the manner in which um, um, people address the board, um, how they have to identify themselves, their demeanor, um, their respect for not only the board but other people in the room, things like that. So I tried to keep it very simple. I think at, at, when we have hearings of a different nature, since it requires usually a process, it's a process that town council would work out with the chair. We've had a few of those, you remember, some of them related to personnel. So that's why I tried to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a huge conflict between the two in some ways. I saw uh, it's like when Flynn's as a overall guideline with the one you came forward as a little more detailed 
step by step how to accomplish this exact same thing, I would have no problem sort of in some way tweaking both and saying we accept the overall guidelines that Ms. Flynn suggested, but as you as the chair can run your hearing by the procedure you've suggested. Um, I think it's a great idea. Uh, it's, it's a great template. And again, I'd, I'd follow up with what Doug had to say that uh, we can come up with a, uh, a blended policy. But the only thing I have a little bit of, uh, of um, angst over is the time limits. Meaning, given the presenter 10 minutes, every hearing is going to be a little different. As we all know, we had a very large public hearing and we got to the wind turbines. Um, if we had stuck to the guidelines with the 10 minutes, it, it might have been very cumbersome. I think that maybe what we could do is look at the board voting the times before a public hearing. It might give us an opportunity to be flexible. Whatever we put in a procedure, a hearing policy, I think we need to adhere to. Uh, and it gives us no flexibility the evening of the, uh, of the hearing itself. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I think um, Karen's correct. That hearing we had here, um, on the wind turbines was totally separate and I think uh, needed its own guidelines for that particular hearing. We also had a public hearing on the turbines a couple of years ago and that was at the, um, at the high school, but that was facilitated by a facilitator, if you remember. So I think when we get to any type of a hearing beyond liquor licenses and docks, it requires kind of its own format because, uh, because of the nature of the hearing itself. This is just pretty standard for liquor licenses and documents. And, and it's worth noting, and, and uh, I have been in contact with town council about this, because it, there's, when we talk about the wind turbines, that was not a hearing per se, it was a meeting. Um, hearings are legal proceedings which um, we, where we operate as a quasi-judicial body. So, um, and it, as Ms. Flynn noted, things like liquor, li liquor licenses, or this evening we have a dock license that, uh, to consider that these are legal proceedings that require a certain degree of formality and process so that we are not violating the applicant's rights or violating the, the rights of the general public to have a fair and impartial hearing. So um, in these situations, it's important that we do outline the steps and the process involved so that it is fair and impartial to everyone every single time we, we conduct these hearings. Meetings, on the other hand, um, there's going to be obviously, depending on the situation, there may be a lot more flexibility in terms of how we want to proceed with a, a meeting for, say, um, whether it's a, a minor issue or a major issue like the wind turbines, there may be a difference in how we deal with that. But um, Mr. Murphy has noted the 10 minutes was a recommendation or a suggestion here. We can always revise that. I know the Zoning Board of Appeals mentions 15 minutes in their um, hearing process, but they also note in there that it can be adjusted as necessary, so maybe that kind of language needs to be placed in here. I, I just wanted to make um, one other comment, which I now completely forgot what it was. Oh, I don't like this. The, the process is really pretty much um, determined by the general laws in terms of opening a hearing, closing a hearing, accepting public testimony and all of that. But I think a lot of the rest of it, we should give uh, the leeway to the chairman because every chairman does it, has their own way of doing things, and it's not, it doesn't vary from the requirements, but it may vary from the way in which the individual actually conducts the hearing. Um, you might do it different from Kevin or Doug, or I might do it different from uh, Kevin or whatever, but we have our own way of doing it, but yet we adhere to the process. And so I think each chairman has to have that kind of flexibility to, to manage it in the way that they can best manage, because uh, we are we are different how we do things. And there's certainly style differences. Yeah. There's no doubt about exactly. that. Um, there are some things that, for example, and I would like to draw your attention to. Um, let me look at this. So, for example, uh, item number eight in the draft that I presented to you, the board shall close the hearing to deliberate the act, the application and consider the following actions. One of the things that was brought to my attention, for example, is that in the past the board has often closed public comment but then still interacted with the applicant. And the problem with doing that sort of a, having that sort of a, an interaction is that it gives the applicant a second chance, if you will, and it denies the public the opportunity to offer comment related to the application after that point. 
So that's why I say we may want to walk through this process a little bit, discuss it with town council, and see what would be an appropriate um, uh, process to establish. Obviously, we're going to want to have flexibility to accommodate different uh, styles of leadership, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we're not um, overlooking some key steps in the process that might deny the public or the applicant their rights in, in, this, in the process. I, I think that's why that all has to be done before the hearing is closed. You know, I mean, after you hear the testimony and then the board interacts with the applicant, they may ask questions of somebody who provided public testimony, but all that really needs to occur before the board votes to close the hearing, because once the hearing's closed, then the board takes it up among themselves right. on so, the discussion and then determines what the, uh, uh, what the outcome would be. So you're suggesting we really shouldn't close a hearing until we have all the information we need? Exactly. I would believe so, that that's what the town council would advise us so if you're, as well. In your 8A that you have right here, it says, shall close the hearing and consider the following action. Continue the application if additional information is need, deemed necessary. Really, that wouldn't be appropriate if we had closed it. That so, would really yeah, the language should be different so there, correct? Move up, yeah. to, to move up to 7B, saying continue the application mm -hmm. to get for information, but mm -hmm. don't close it until we feel we have all the information we need to make the decision. Correct. The, the other scenario is we, we go through a timeline of who gets to speak and really when, but I think the applicant should actually have an opportunity to have the final word, mm -hmm. because the applicant is the one before us. Uh, uh, granted, the public has some concerns, and they, they surely need to be heard, but the applicant should have the right to address those concerns in their closing statements. And, and one more comment. And while we're on the hearing, too, in terms of the times on the agenda, the public hearings, when they're noticed, they have a specific time when they begin. And I think that's one thing that sh probably should be on the agenda, is the time of the public hearing. I know in the past, as chair, when a discussion has been going on and the time comes up for a public hearing, I've had, as chair, had to stop the discussion, put it aside, open the hearing, have the hearing, and then come back to whatever the item was before because if it's noticed at a specific time, and council can help us with that too. We, in the past, that's the way we always did it. We held them exactly at the time for which they were noticed. And actually, I'm glad you raised that question yeah, because I did, in fact, I did in fact consult town council oh, about this. Oh, and the, the answer I received, and if you look at the way the Conservation Commission uh, notices their meetings or the, the ZBA or other regulatory bodies, you'll note that all of their hearings technically begin at seven o'clock. And the reason why is that as long as the hearing begins after at seven o'clock or thereafter, we are adhering to the letter of the law because obviously if we have a series of hearings, for example, the way the Conservation Commission does, there's no way that you can hope to start each hearing at a specific time. If one runs over for an extended period of time, you can't necessarily table it and come back to the other ones. You, you create a, 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 a rather big mess. Town Council advised that as long as we, in our situation, for example, we start our meetings at 7 o'clock, if we notice all of our hearings at 7 o'clock and simply make sure that they're foremost on the agenda, that way if there's a, a subsequent hearing that uh, doesn't start until, say, 8 o'clock, it still follows the legal precedent of being noticed that those folks will be here at 7 o'clock and they might have to wait but they were not denied the opportunity to speak because the, the notice was for 8 o'clock and we started at 7. Uh, the, in, in, you're using poor examples to me, being in the Conservation Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals. Because quite candidly, I don't think they're being fair to applicants. They might have an applicant who shows up with an attorney and engineers. They might not be, uh, they're not noted on the agenda until, uh, well again, it's posted at 7 p.m. There are some evenings that those folks don't ever go on the agenda because they've carried on for so long. Uh, we have a duty and a right to the citizens of this community not to run the bill. If we post something at 7 p.m. and we know that that application is not going to go forward till 9 p.m., we're really, you know, putting a, um, some burden on the applicants. There's legal fees, engineering fees. Um, quite candidly, the days have gone by, and we all know that you can't jot on the back of a piece of paper the way you'd like something built or, or what have you. But it's really not fair to an applicant, especially in a small community like this, 
to be able to come before their elected officials and ask for them. In some cases, it's relief. Some cases, it's for, for uh, uh, in fact, uh, you know, a, a license. But it's not fair to say to them, we don't know how long it's going to be, so have your attorneys come here and be here for five hours. And maybe it might not be five, it might be one. But it behooves them to be there at 7 o'clock. So I have a little bit of a problem. I'll follow Rebecca's lead about the public hearing things, specifically things that people are going to pay somebody to be here and represent them. They're going to be here for long periods of time. Uh, you know, even though we might try to get them move up in the agenda, there are some nights that that's not possible. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want us to take that into account. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with Kevin because I think we have an ability to set a time mm -hmm. because we can pretty well manage it. Um, I mean, they don't go on forever and ever. And at least mm -hmm. if they don't, we usually have the testimony we need. Uh, it's just like, it's kind of like making a, a good estimate of how long something would take based on the, on the complications that there might be. Some don't have many complications at all, but I really think we should try to notice them at particular times and put them on the agenda at a particular time for the very same reasons. I think people would, would really respect us if we did that, rather than just put everybody on at seven. I think people are also already a little bit off the edge because some of the, some of the items have gone much longer than the agenda calls for. We're, we're so I think the best that we can do to keep keep to it is uh, is in everyone's best interest. But we're talking about the rare case when we have two hearings one night. And it's very rare that we actually have two of the formal hearings we're talking about one night. Oh, liquor license hearings we could. If I may. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I'm no, it's all right. Um, and I, I don't mind that this, uh, this sort of relaxed discussion because obviously this is the board's process and it is for the board to, to make these decisions and, and um, to have this discussion. So I think this is good and healthy. Um, but the agenda this evening, um, which I've somehow lost in my paperwork here, um, the, uh, you'll note on the agenda that the only reason that I've got this particular agenda item first is because we don't have a formal hearing process or procedures at this point and I wanted to have thank you I wanted to have some discussion about this before um, we went into a hearing but I can tell you that on any given night or any given Monday when we have hearings I will put those first on the agenda so that we're not and Kevin you make an excellent point we shouldn't be holding people over till nine o'clock and saying that it's noticed at seven if there's going to be a hearing on any given Monday night, it will be the first thing on the agenda so that it can be addressed immediately. Um, and to Doug's point, I think there's, there are those rare circumstances where we may have multiple hearings and we can, I'll discuss it with office staff and see if there's some way that we can possibly try to do some estimates so we're not keeping people here longer than necessary. But um, I think for the most part, we can, we can probably manage that. And so with that, do we have any other comments or questions or discussion about this, or do we want to move on to our hearing at this point? I think it's a good, healthy discussion. We'll just continue yeah. to work on right. it. Good subject to bring up. All right. And with that, the next item on our agenda is a wetland hearing, modification of existing dock and ramp. Some of the Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing under Section 240-77, the Wetland Regulations of the Zoning Bylaws of the, uh, the Town of Falmouth, on June 10, 2013, at 7 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, Falmouth Town Hall, on the application of James Mamory Sr. and Mary Catherine Mamory Trustees, 42 Brainerd Road Realty Trust, for permission for the minor reconfiguration of the existing licensed ramp and float an installation of four float pilings and the installation of a concrete landing for the landward end of the ramp in the waters of Rands Canal at 42 Brainerd Road, North Falmouth, Massachusetts. The area affected is Rands Canal. Interested parties may review this file, may review the file, excuse me, on the hearing at the selectman's office. Um, if I may, I think there are enough copies in there for every one of us. There's a map and a... Indeed there are. Does everybody yeah, have a copy or do you, do you like the copy? The applicant's representative, I presume. Correct. Uh, for the record, Tim Santos from Holmes and McGrath representing the applicant. The property is located at 42 Brandon Road in North Falmouth. 
Uh, the property is currently developed with an existing single family home and an existing license pier. The property has recently been purchased by 42 Brainerd Road Realty Trust and the applicant wishes to make some modifications to the existing, existing pier. Uh, we've recently gone through conservation. Conservation has issued an order of conditions, which I have copies with me, and I can forward them to you if you do not have the copy yet. Um, the applicant is wishing to reconfigure the existing floater ramp as well as install four piles. Um, the 12 inch uh, vinyl piles, so minor modifications. There's an existing license, the amnesty license on here we have spoken with. DEP, so our next step in order to get their final approval is to come before this board and uh, obtain a permission from your board as well. If the board has any questions, I'd be more than happy to address them. All right. Mr. Jones, if you wouldn't mind reading sure. this. Uh, we have a report from the Harbor Master Inspection, the Harbor Master, saying that there were no navigational issues at the time of view, no mooring issues. There's going to be no increase in dock footprint, and the recommendation from the Harbor Master is approved as proposed. Uh, from the Department of Natural Resources, Chuck Martinson, this general area currently and historically contains quahogs, oysters, and bay scallops. In addition, both river herring and American eels annually migrate through the system to the nearby Cedar Lake. I would encourage the board to strongly consider these resources when permitting the dates that such a project would be allowed. And then we have from the Conservation Commission uh, a copy of the order conditions, which is the standard order conditions, but there are also some special order conditions, which I would like to read into record. First special conditions, all floats and piers, if designed to be in continuous use, shall have adequate bubblers protecting piles during winter months. And number two, all mitigation planting shall be installed prior to or immediately after the reconfiguration of the ramp and float plus the 33 other standard order conditions as listed on the permit from the Conservation Commission. All right. Questions, questions from the board? I have about two or three questions. The first one is um, how many boats will be tied up? It'll be one boat tied up. One boat. I, I noticed that was missing from the special conditions of the Conservation Commission. They usually specify on docks how many boats may be tied up. Um, were they aware that there was just one boat? Correct. They are. Yeah, okay. They are aware. okay. Um, my second question is the um, a natural resources officer spoke to the issue of the migration of eels mm -hmm. and um, herring during certain periods. I, I asked him about that today, and he said that the migration period is usually between February and May, mm -hmm. but also that marine fisheries would probably uh, have some concerns because they're very much aware of the fish that are in those waters, particularly the eel and the herring, and he thought that marine fisheries might be uh, talking to the Conservation Commission or to you about when that construction period might start so it doesn't interfere with the migration? The um, DMF did issue DMF. a letter to conservation and there was there were no time um, No time, time restrictions? Frame, no time speci specifications on when they could do it. I will tell you that the applicant has a contract lined up so they're right. ready to go as soon as possible. Prior to February? Correct. Okay. Um, that's, those are my only questions. Other questions? Uh, Go ahead. Um, I just noticed on the Harbor Master Inspection Report that this says there's no increase in the dock footprint. There's actually a reduction of 15 square feet in the reconfiguration. And then the general purpose in doing this dock is? Um, currently, right now, the if you've been to the site, I did go um, to the site. The ramp is attached to that wooden, what I'm going to call a wooden plank. Yeah. Okay, it's an eye bolt, and then the ramp goes down to the float, and mm -hmm. the float's attached to the ramp with an eye bolt. So right now, there's four um, wires that come off each corner of the float, and they're attached to those wooden piles on the shore. So for safety, the new owners felt it was better to have piles at the corners of the floats so that the float didn't move when that boat was attached okay, to it for safety and maintenance on the boats. Okay. Um, and when we reconfigured it the, for the float in order for the, the ramp not to fall off the float at low tides, there's actually a reduction of 15 okay. square feet. So. Okay, so it isn't an incre increase of the dock. It's a boat that they already possess. Correct. So there isn't any changes in that. It's just... Correct. 
the connection. And it's okay. no more seaward than what already exists. Yes. It's at the okay. same location. Okay. I just walked all over the place and <laughs> thought of all kinds of problems. I guess there aren't any. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm very familiar with the area. I used to clam there when I was younger. I think this provides uh, for a little bit more suitability as well as stability within that, uh, that harbor. Um, the way that dock was configured before, it surely could have let go in any given storm. So it provides uh, a little more safety for the rest of the neighbors in the harbor. Uh, to Ms. Flynn's question, I am concerned that the standard order conditions list plural boats a number of different times in the standard order condition. I wouldn't want that to be assumed or later on interpreted by a future owner. Oh, the Conservation Commission has given us permission for plural boats when really the permission I understand is just for a single boat. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if that's something we can add to a special condition. Or I, I, I don't think that's within our, our purview. Yeah. Is it not? Okay. I don't think it is. We, we, don't, we don't come up with an order of conditions. We only approve the license or not approve the license to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, honestly, I'm not sure either. And actually, I've, again, that's one of the things I've discussed mm -hmm. with town council about the, uh, the limitations of our jurisdiction when it comes to whether it's a liquor license or a dock license and what it is that we can and cannot consider in these situations. Um, I do think that I, I know it is a practice of the Conservation Commission to specify that only one vessel be tied up to any given dock. Mm -hmm. But... Um, and I'm also sure. that there be a bubbler. Is, I don't believe that's in there. Yeah, that was yes, it is. It is in there. Mr. Okay. Chairman, can, it, can mm -hmm. I ask a question of the applicant? Yeah. Um, is this this dock are, already have a Chapter 91 license? Yes, it does. So does if it, it already, Chapter 91 license. Okay. So it was already licensed, so therefore mm -hmm. the number of boats and things of that nature were probably already addressed in the original license. And if they weren't addressed, this would this is just really changing the, not the configuration, but it's already got a Chapter 91 license. Well, I, I would like to um, condition it on the fact that the construction does not occur between the months of February and May. And the, 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 um, uh, the rep <laughs> applicant's representative here has already said that that won't happen because they're going to, they're going to begin construction right away. But I think in order to um, uh, uh, protect the issue of the, of the fisheries, that it would be important to do that. Can yeah, we can ask, do a lot of things with docks because know, uh, can, can we've asked question? people to share docks before. Can, can I ask you a question? Though? Are you getting that just strictly from our our natural resources officer, or the de Department of uh, the de Department of Marine Fisheries? No, from our natural resources officer. But I it's don't in, think I don't think he's in his memo. Uh, he he oh. puts in his memo the date. No, I asked him what the dates were. He told me what the dates were because he didn't put them in. If, if I may, the applicant did mention that <coughs> they had spoken to the uh, state DNR. Do you have, you said you had a letter, I believe? Am I mistaken? Because we don't have anything in our file from the state. I can submit this. This is where we found but if that's okay. It's actually March 15th and June 30th. March 15th. Thank you. This goes to the Falmouth Conservation Commission, and it is from Eileen Feeney, Fisheries Habitat Specialist. The Division of, Mich of Marine Fisheries has reviewed the notice of intent. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. The project site lies within Rans Canal. Uh, following comments for your consideration. To protect diadronomous fish passage, migration, and spawning habitat, and I believe they're referring to the eels here, uh, the time of year restriction on all dredging and in the water activities should be required from March 15 through June 30. Okay. Plans list CCA treated lumber. CCA leaches both copper and arsenic into the water column. These chemicals are toxic to a variety of estuarine bi biota. To avoid negative impacts on the marine environment, Marine Fisheries recommends the use of alternative materials from sustainable sources such as non-treated local hardwoods, e.g. black locust or synthetic materials, for example, recycled plastic. So those are the two comments that they've provided to us. Yeah, CCA so it's already, already in the special, it's already And I can area. address the second one. The second one was an oversight on DMF's part. They, it's on the plan for the vinyl coating. Okay. So. so then, they actually say here, should be required, the uh, time of year restriction should be required from March 15th through June 30th. So, Per uh, Ms. Flynn's recommendation, I think we could require that as part of the conditions of our approval. 
And you said we may keep this? If you need a copy. No, I, I have could... an email copy. Of okay. Office, so that's fine. Thank you very much. I'm okay with that. All right. Do we have any other questions or comments? All right. We'll open it up to questions or comments for the public. Anyone who is in favor of this application? Anyone who is in opposition to this application? All right. Hearing none, then. I do have a question. Okay. If I'm you'd sorry, like, please yeah. please come to the lectern, then. If, okay. If you're not sure if you're in favor or in opposition, a question is perfectly acceptable as well. Um, um, if you could identify yourself for the record, please. Mary Hubbard from uh, 171 Bay Road. I'm across the canal from the proposed building site. Um, you said vinyl clad. Oh, vinyl clad what? Pilings. Yeah, you need oh. to direct your comments to the chair, please, and we will okay. ask the applicant to respond. Okay, I didn't know if responded. it was vinyl clad CCA pilings that would then still leach, or is it a vinyl piling? It's, um, it's a vinyl coated CCA marine pile. Um, they're used in all towns. They were used in the town of Falmouth when the town of Falmouth rebuilt the Inner Harbor. Um, I know that because we worked on that project. Um, they're allowed. Um, what the what DMF and what conservation doesn't want to see is they don't want to see just a CCA treated pile. Um, in the past, they used to allow CCA treated piles because the uh, the waters um, attack the wood and degrade it over time, and the CCA would help preserve the piles. But now, what they use is a vinyl coated CCA pile, so it won't leach. Unfortunately, the standard condition says no CCA treated wood may be used. Well, okay, that's fine. It does say on the plan as well, or approved equal. So uh, we have reviewed that with conservation. They have no problem allowing the vinyl coated CCA piles. I mean, they were used for the town of Falmouth and in our I think you may find yourself in a hard case if you use it when the conditions say you can't. We'll discuss that with conservation when we go prior to installation. If it becomes an issue. The, Con the Conservation Commission could allow um, a uh, administrative approval that the Conservation Administrator could look at it and determine that it's a, a minor change um, and administratively approve it or refer it to the full Commission for um, larger consideration if necessary. So, um, But that is their order of conditions, so we, we can't modify yep. their conditions. But um, certainly, it'll be up to the commission to make sure that that's enforced one way or the other. I just have one mm -hmm. other comment. The uh, the length of the float you have at twenty two point five feet is that correct? That is correct. The longest part. Correct. And that's where the boat would lie. Correct. At that at that area, the correct. outside part. The, of the outside float. part, correct. But no boats on the. There are on no either boats end. on the inside part. Or on the ends. Correct. Because that's what. Six feet, four point four feet. A, a typical width of a flow is six feet. That's so that it doesn't rock. Okay. Thanks. Any further questions from the board? No. Last comments from the audience. All right then. How does the board wish to proceed? We'll close. We have enough information to close the hearing then. I'd like right. to close the hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? It's unanimous. All right. So how does the board wish to proceed? Do we want to make a decision this evening, or do we want to take this under advisement? I, I have no problem. I, the window is a little larger, that Mrs. Flynn was saying, than what the, the Department of Marine Fisheries right. says. So I, I have no problem with that smaller window. So. Uh, I have no problem moving forward with the motion to approve. Uh, with no construction from March 31st to June 30th. Um, and the plan. March date, 31st, or excuse me, I'm sorry, or March, March 15th? March, whatever the date was on the letter, I'm sure. Not, March 15th through June 30th. March 15th, with no construction to occur between March 15th and June 30th. Uh, the plan dated uh, April, 10th. April 10, 2013. And that is your motion. We have a second. All right. Any discussion on the motion, then? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? 
unanimous. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I think it's important just to, uh, Rebecca's new, that mm -hmm. on these wetland hearings, this mm -hmm. is a super majority, so we need four votes. Mm -hmm. Even if even if we only have four people, we need four votes. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we want to list why we are approving it as opposed to or do we need to? Um, that would be a good idea if, it, if the board would like to provide some feedback at this moment um, so that we may adequately put this in. One of the, the issues that we've run up against in the past was a lack of supporting documentation for our decisions. In this situation, um, I can offer my own comment that I consider this to be a minor change that uh, is adequately conditioned by the Conservation Commission. It also has received, I think, support from our, uh, from our staff in both the Harbor Master and Natural Resources mm -hmm. with the right. conditions that we have a added to it. Agreed. Is, Mr. Chairman, has already signed this plan, or do you want another plan? Oh, yes, please. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other facts that we would like to enter into the record? All right, then. I think I hope they know what it's like at low tide <laughs> <laughs> out there. There isn't, the there isn't any water. <laughs> With that, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. I have a personal issue I must attend to, so I'm going to hand the gavel over to Mr. Jones for the remainder of our meeting. Um, this is an extra, actually, so the, the signed I'll copy. Next item on the agenda is to discuss and our vote to approve the change of manager of the Woods Hole Golf Club. Do we have someone representing the golf club here to present the argument? Uh, the Woods Hole Golf Club is petitioning for change of manager from Norman Hall to Michael Lawrence on their all alcohol club license. Shall we have a response from Lieutenant Reed on this? Any thoughts from the board on whether we proceed, whether we need to continue this? Without information? Mr. Um, I just noticed that they needed to have this Corey investigation, but I didn't see it any, anywhere that that has happened or, or uh, noted in my information. So maybe if someone would just say that... Um, Do we know that a Corey investigation happened and what uh, the response was from that? Uh, we do not have a response from the police department on that request. Uh, how about, okay. uh, I, can I make a motion? So this, is, this is a simple housekeeping bill. Make a motion that we approve subject to a positive Corey check. Yeah, I thought there was a, a response from Brian Lee. I, I haven't seen one either. Yeah. Doug was right. I, 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 I wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, there is. Wait a minute, this is from. This is to Lieutenant Reed. Right. Oh, two. Okay. I'll second your motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve contingent upon a, uh, actually, a negative Corey response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All okay. those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay. Pass unanimously. Next item on the agenda is the executed deed to 55 Glenwood Avenue to transfer the title to Habitat for Humanity. I haven't seen what you I, um, I, I would like to move that we, uh, that we execute the deed. I think we've been aware of this for some time, and, uh, and I think they're, uh, they're very much uh, willing and ready to uh, get started on that project. So I would move approval of the deed. Okay. Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? Uh, I'd just like to say that this has been a long, drawn-out process, and it was approved by town meeting, um, and that was the will of the Congress of this town, and I think we need to move it forward. Yeah, I would say that in the email from Pat Harris, she asked that we also vote to uh, to reapprove the um, the, the agreement 
the development agreement. And then there's another document in there that she asked us to vote on, but they weren't on the agenda. And um, I, did, I did email Brad to remind him that they weren't on the agenda, but um, somehow it got lost in the, in, the, in the communication. So those two items will have to wait till next week. Correct. I, I think you see them in the folder there. I but think we can't vote them tonight because they're not listed here. I think both of them are part of the deed so that we can vote them. In other words, we're approving the deed. I don't know. I, I haven't seen the paperwork since the question was raised this evening, um, but generally the, um, the um, development agreement is recorded with the deed and is approved as part of it. I, I don't, can't comment on what Attorney Harris was asking to have reaffirmed. It may just be the dates. Um, yes. I know, I was just looking for it in the deed, though. She said um, the, uh, the agenda may need to be updated to include reapproval re of the regulatory agreement slash deed rider. And then, um, and also attached is the approved regulatory agreement. And the BOS, the Board of Selectmen will need to reapprove the agreement and the attached deed rider. That's what she was asking. But that's, those are the two items that weren't listed now, whether they're considered part of the deed and we could vote on them. I don't know. The deed cannot be recorded without them. They're part of the decision. They're part of the decision. Okay. And uh, it's not clear from the email as to whether it's... I think to be safe, we should just go ahead and approve the deed at this time and on the next week's agenda, we'll give it to them and just to be absolutely safe that we've covered it. Because in her email, she, she did suggest that we approve those additional agreements. So it almost sounded like they were not yep. consistent. They're all signed, executed, and notarized documents of the board. Um, prior board, there's no changes noted to them. Uh, the affirmation would simply be affirming what the prior board did, signed by Chairman Murphy, uh, Selectman Flynn, Braga, and Jones. There are no new documents here. Well, I'd just rather be on the safe side since they're not on the agenda that we, we hold it in mind for next week. Just on a peek. Okay, we have a motion and a second to, uh, to uh, execute the deed. Any public comment? Okay. Uh, uh, I just have one question, I, I, which I think that you can just, it's on the agenda to approve the deed, but I think we can approve the deed with any riders or covenants that were, in other words, if, if there are, in other words, this is the deed that, that they gave us. Uh, this is a pretty lengthy legal document right here in front of us. I, I don't know whether I can find this, the fine print, but if it's not a rider or covenant on this deed, then we would have to come back, but otherwise we can't. Yeah, I just, what Town Council, Associate Council says in her email is the open meeting notice agenda may need, need to, to be, be updated, updated to include reapproval of the regulatory agreement okay, well, slash deed rider. But, but I sent problem. the but, email on, but okay. it got lost. But my, my comments really are that there's no change to the document proposed that was previously approved by the board. So I'm unclear as to what needs to be reapproved since it already was approved. Well, so I'd like. And these are exhibits of the deed. I mean, Correct. One's exhibit A and one's exhibit C of the entire deed. Yep. So they are actually well, part and parcel. If we of vote it. to execute the deed and sign it, and then if we find out tomorrow from council that those documents actually go with the deed, then we're all set. We don't right. have to do anything else. But if they are separate, we'll then we can back. bring them back. And mm -hmm. council can advise us as to which way to go. How's that? Excellent. Good. Thank you. <coughs> now, can we vote to execute the deed as we have it in our hands? We sure. Understand it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? None. Passed unanimously. Mm -hmm. The next is to vote the warrant for the Tuesday, 25th, June 25th, 2013 special state election. This is an election for the Senator in Congress. I have a motion to 
to approve the warrant for Tuesday, June 25th. I move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Um, can I ask, I might want to read, read, it. read this into the record. Okay. Uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts to either of the constables of the town of Falmouth. In the name of the Commonwealth, you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town who are qualified to vote in a special state election to vote at Precinct 1 Town Hall, Precinct 2 Goss County Recreation Center, Precinct 3 T Ticket Elementary School, Precinct 4 East Falmouth Elementary School, Precinct 5 North Falmouth Congregational Church Hall, Precinct 6 Morse Pond School, Precinct 7 McCoy Congregational Church Hall, Precinct 8 The Navigator, Precinct 9 Pal, on Tuesday, the 25th of June, 2013, from 7 a.m. to 7 to 8 p.m., for the following purpose: to cast votes in the state election for the candidates for the following office of Senator and Congress for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Okay. Have a motion and a second. Oh. Oh. I thought we already voted. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Extensions passed unanimously. Next are discuss and approve minutes for meeting of June 3rd, 2013, public session. <coughs> approval of the minutes of June 3rd. Second. Okay, I have a, a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any changes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstentions? No. Passed unanimously. Uh, the Executive session June 3rd, 2013. I know we do have one correction and a discussion exactly to clarify who had happened. On the very last page on the last motion, uh, the motion and second was by the same person. And I think we need to clarify as to actually who did second that motion. And this is just a motion to adjourn. I don't remember who I made the motion to adjourn. Do we have someone else seconding it? I, I think I did. Okay. So we're changing that Kevin Murphy seconded that motion. Okay. So with that change, I move approval of the minutes of the executive session in June of June 3rd and not to release them. A motion? Second. A second. Any discussion? To This is to approve and not to release. All those in favor say aye. Aye. One, Opposed? One abstention. And one uh, abstention. That was part of the meeting that I was... Uh, so that was three in favor, no opposed, and one abstention. Okay, we'll move on to summary of actions. Um, we only have four, so I'm just going to go through each one of them and not worry about a blanket vote. The first is a special event um, for the 23rd Annual Falmouth Walk on Sunday, August 10th. Basically from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is Saturday. I think it's Saturday. Yep. Saturday is on the They usually have it the day before the road race. No? But that's early. I thought the road race was... I thought, I thought it was, too. Yeah. I don't have it in front of me. The you know, road race is on the 11th. If the date is right, the and they, says, it's the day. That's and your right. application says Saturday. Right, mm -hmm. so it should say so Saturday. Saturday, August 10th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So did you make a, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, any public comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have unanimous. Special event, laughter yoga, Marina Park. This is a numerous events on Mondays starting July 1st and going until August 26th. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it unanimous. Next is a special event, the Green Harvest Organic Farmers Market and Artisans Fair, Marina Park, July 23rd. It's a Tuesday, and that goes from 12 a.m. to 4 p.m. Motion to approve. 12 p.m. Right? 12 p.m. to 4 p.m., sorry. Yeah, yeah 12 a.m., that'd be the early market. <laughs> Stan's not going to be there at midnight, no. right, Stan? <laughs> I move approval. All right, and that we have heard from... I'll do the second. Uh, Recreation Department, they have no problem with that. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 
And finally, we have a one-day liquor license for the Falmouth Artist Guild for Jan uh, July 12th, 2013. The event going through. Uh, if I can done. give a disclosure. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm the holder of an all-alcoholic seasonal liquor license. I'll make a motion to approve. This event from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. as a fundraiser. I have a motion for a second. Second. Any other comment? Any public comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. Do we have any individual selectmen's report? Um. All set? Well, I, I wanted to mention that Wednesday, the MMR, the Mass Military Reservation, is having a tour of the base. It's like a three-hour tour from two to five. Um, they are going to take um, elected officials and other guests all over the base of all the projects that have been done there in the last few years. And um, I know I'm planning to go, and I know Becky's planning yes. to go, mm -hmm. and I think the town manager's going as well. Two, 2 2 p.m. Where are they meeting at? On the bed? Um, at the Welcome Center. Okay. Um, and if you're going, you should call because you have to get. They have to be. Your name has to be on the list at the gate. But probably Amin will be there, so maybe you won't have to call ahead. He's it's even good. harder than the local. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was trying to think of. Um, Is there a selectman of cultures meeting this Friday? Yes, this Friday at 10:30. Um, the uh, Cape Cod Selectman and Counselors Association is having their monthly meeting at the Falmouth Inn. So that's the first time they've been in Falmouth in a long, long time. And well, I think they were here, you know, the, or the managers had their meeting at, um, at La Cucina one time. But this one, um, I, I think the, uh, the delegation, the state delegation will be there. And uh, I think Dan Wolf will be there. Uh, Senator Dan Wolf, um, and I think the governor was supposed to come, but I'm not sure he's coming. On this, on this Friday? Well, yes, but I'm not sure he's coming. I think he wants to stay away from Falmouth for a while. No, I'm just kidding. But um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's confirmed. He's going to now after he made that announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It'll be in the paper tomorrow, um. right? Mm -hmm. um, no, I, th I don't know. It hasn't been confirmed whether or not he's coming, so that's all I know about the Friday meeting. Anything else that's coming up this week? There are a lot of things happening this week. Um, there is the Day of Portugal celebration on yeah. Saturday. Uh, on Saturday mm -hmm. at 5 p.m., which mm -hmm. is unusual. They usually have it Sunday mm -hmm. at noon, but it's this coming Saturday at 5, and I haven't responded yet, but I will, I will be going. I thought maybe I... Excuse me. That um, if I could just just read this into the record, uh, the Portuguese American Association will hold their flag raising ceremony on Saturday, June 15th, at 5 p.m. You're invited to be a part of this annual ceremony. Our scholarship awards will be presented at that time, and we will also have the Council of Portugal, Mr. De Graca, who will speak on our heritage. Following the ceremony, we'll be serving hors d'oeuvres from 5:30 to 6 and dinner will follow with an authentic Portuguese dancers. Please respond if you plan to attend. So I think it is a good thing for the public to know, and um, you just need to say you would like to join. So, and Thank uh, you. The, the other um, thing that's happening this week is Thursday and Friday is um, at the Cape Cotter in Hyannis, uh, Webner, and is putting on a coastal management resources conference that lasts a day and a half. It's all day Thursday and a half a day Friday. Uh, the registration is free and I think there's uh, lunch provided on Thursday. And um, for any, in case anybody wants to know, I spent four days in training as a member of the Barnesville County Retirement Board, which is not a county board, but it's the retirement board for all the towns on the Cape except Falmouth and the vineyard in Nantucket, and all the fire districts and all the water districts, and uh, the ladies' library and Booster, and uh, the RTA, and all those other organizations. But 
the state came down and did a, a two day Saturday, last Saturday and Sunday full training program. Uh, and then Monday, Tuesday, and a half a day Wednesday. So um, that was pretty interesting. And now I, I just received an email today that the state treasurer's office is that holds conferences on, uh, they call them money meetings. And it's all about um, municipal finance and all of that. And apparently the treasurer's office holds these other, elsewhere in the state, but this time around they're going to be regional, and he's planning to have one at the Cape Cod Community College in October. So, um, so that will be uh, probably very, very helpful. And it's also for individuals. Uh, there are sessions for people who want to learn how to do their, their budgets at home, how to plan budgets, how to uh, plan for retirement. Uh, there's a whole, it's all about money and people, and it will probably be very useful for a lot of people who just personally would like to have um, some knowledge of, of, from financial planning. So, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure if this is correct when I ask this, but what has happened with the uh, constable um, policy or our decisions that we, but uh, I don't know if this is. I don't think that's the item we can discuss that it's not on the agenda. Okay. Time. So it's, it, it should be coming up on the agenda. So it comes up on the agenda. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I will be missing uh, Monday's meeting. I'll be traveling to Greece for eight days. Mm -hmm. So I'll also, unfortunately, be missing some of these other events. Uh, I also did print out the liaison assignments from last year uh, and left them at home, and we'll put them in everyone's mailbox to look at so we can make some determination of what people would like to be assigned to for liaison for community assignments in the future. Okay, any other selected report? Heather, do you want to review the town manager's report? Um, no, I know you provided that to you in writing in advance of this evening's meeting, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Okay. Uh, any correspondence that people want to review and or discuss? Okay, and do we have any questions from the public and or press at this time? John Tudor from Precinct 8. Uh, we had a meeting of some people who are, are the friends of Town of Wind. We'd like to know when it might be on the agenda to discuss turning the turbines back on 24-7. Okay. Uh, that is not something we'll discuss tonight, but thank you for the question. Okay, thank you. I can't give you an answer as to when that's going to be on the agenda. It's something that certainly concerns us also. Yes, sir. My name is Courtney Barber, uh, 6 Crown Avenue, Falmouth Heights. Um, further to what the other gentleman just said, um, I think that after, this is a comment more than a question, I think that after the town of Falmouth voted overwhelmingly not to tear the wind uh, generators down, I feel that it's incumbent upon the selectmen to move forward with turning the generators on full time. Your comment? Can, excuse me, uh, is this some, yes. something new in the agenda? Uh, uh, it, we've never done this yeah. before and we it's not on the agenda? This, yet. Uh, this is something okay. that the chairman of the board did put on the agenda. I am sticking with his request for it. We are not going to be discussing it. I wouldn't think that these comments are necessarily going to get you much leverage because it is not our agenda. Um, it is a chance to ask a question. I'd rather have it not be statements being made at this time. That's not what the purpose of it was. If there are questions out there, and the first one's question about when it might be on the agenda, and I can understand that if we could refrain from making proclamations and information so about stuff. Questions. If there are questions that can I can I make a rebuttal? <laughs> or I'll Let's just leave it like that, please. I, thank you very much. Any other questions? Do I have a motion, motion to, to adjourn? adjourn? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Welcome to Falmouth. If you're a visitor, this is where surf and sun meet for fun.
If you're a resident, this is where you'll find the businesses and the resources necessary to fill all of your needs. If you're a business person, this can be your home. Join with other men and women who work together to make this a sustainable economy year-round. Welcome to Falmouth Cape Cod.